I'm just gonna go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um. So yeah, I guess can you just briefly describe again the how you work with the organizations in the school, like mm -hmm. the PTA, to address and talk about teen suicide as an issue in the community? Sure. So overall, I feel that there's um, in high school a lot of challenges. And so when I started as principal, I recognized that first and foremost, we need to establish a level of trust with students. And that doesn't come easy sometimes because students come from all walks of life and oftentimes their experiences are gonna determine how they interact with adults. So it's our job to really create a positive and nurturing environment. So we do a lot of welcoming students and encouraging them to be a part of something at the school. Once they feel that being a part of something, they connect and their trust begins to, I think, develop. And we oftentimes encourage them to be able to have a voice and they can share with us the things that are going on. And we recognize that high school can be incredibly difficult. So with that, we wanna have an opportunity for students to have a connection, someone they trust in the building that oftentimes can come to them. And that may be an establishment with an outside community program. Um, so for example, our partnership with PTA and also Clinton Youth and Family Service is integral to the work that we do with students. And we have a level of um, you know, connection with them where we provide various programs, school-wide programs that provide students with opportunities to hear from outside speakers, but also to hear from the students. So, the students oftentimes present to students about issues that they're facing. And it creates almost a sense of vulnerability that we can share and there's trust. And then within that trust comes, I think, an opportunity to talk about it. And that is something that we do. So we have heard of situations in which students come to us concerned about another student and we're able to act on it. And for them, I think they feel empowered that we're being listened to as the student and we care about the things that are happening in students' lives. And it's not just about going to class, but rather it's about your academics, but most importantly, it's about who you are and how you're feeling. And each and every day, we try to impress upon them that the school is here for you. And in time, I think that that has, over the course of the 10 years, really become part of who we are in our culture. And so the mantra, we are Morgan, we are family, has extended to the students sharing that with others, which makes me feel good. Right. I can actually add a stat in there because we've done the same survey since 2005. We've done it every other year. It's um, the Search Institute survey of student attitudes and behaviors. And one of the things that it measures is um, connection to school. And I want to, I don't know the exact numbers, Claire, I can, I can get them to you, but I know that in 2005, the number of students reporting connection to school, I want to say was like in the teens. Yeah. And over yeah. the 10 years of you being in the building, like I remember specifically looking at when you came and, and then that next, the latest survey, I, there were some kids saying like between 70 and 80% of mm -hmm. certain grades mm -hmm. were reporting a positive connection to their school. Yeah. And that to me is it, very telling looking at when you've been in the building and different initiatives that have gone on in the building mm -hmm. that that's because of you mm -hmm. <laughs> and the and the the environment of nurturance that you're talking about um, and if you want I can email you or you know call me as soon as we finish here and I, yeah. I can get it from you from my office sure. what those numbers are because it, it it is reflective of even in the seven years that I've been here working with students that are Kind of under the radar as leaders some are the leaders and some are kind of just the under under but they represent a big voice of the school and they really feel a lot more invested in what's going on here than they did when i first started yeah and i think for a lot of students who feel alone and isolated we want to be able to help them realize that you're not alone that there are ways in which if you're struggling and we've broken through I think with many students because of the relationships that they've had with other students if we don't necessarily know the extent of what's happening with them oftentimes through a friend that mm -hmm. friend will contact a guidance counselor or go to a social worker or go to our school psychologist and say I'm worried about my friend and I know that she might not like me for this but I need to say something because I care about her and I think that's been 
helpful because our school does try to support and we do have connections with outside agencies like 211 who will come in and help the family go through a crisis and we don't ignore those things those are clear-cut signs we have staff training to talk about what are the signs that you might see in terms of a child who might be at risk and we'll have opportunities for the staff to ask questions um, a lot of the staff will go to a trusted staff member who has clinical background to say I'm worried about this student I've noticed a drastic change in their behavior and I think something needs to be done so at the school oh, sorry. I was just gonna say that you know since I've come on we've really also worked closely um, at the state level with Joanne Freiberg who is it works at for the state of Connecticut the Department of Education and she does trainings on school climate school mm -hmm. culture and so much of the work that she does and we've all been to the training and then a number of our staff have been is just emphasizing that idea of you know connecting and it's and it is that preventative measures that not the reactive and so um, in terms of you know especially the the hot topic word of, of which it's funny she she's the liaison and she doesn't like it the word bullying so much of that can be quelled or you know you can can be dealt with if there are structures in place where the environment is welcoming and it is something where voices are heard. Um, so, you know, I think for, for us, we've seen mm -hmm. just through that work and having a sounding board and, and, and being able to reach out and talk um, to, to get ideas that it's been something. And then now she's moved very much into this, the, the, the role of having students with voice and, you know, having them be a part of the process because it's not so much that we are in school to teach the kids and to do to the kids or do things for the kids. We're with the kids, and mm -hmm. it's the whole idea that we work together as a as a small community or family. That we together with the kids, we work with them so that they learn. Right. And this school year, we kicked off with a school wide theme um, about kindness, and so we worked with some students and opened up with an assembly focused on um, the the importance of that kindness can have and as simple as a hello in the morning and um, how we care about each other. And so this has taken kind of a, a kindness um, revolution. So we have a kindness in motion um, project that we're doing this year in which if a student has an idea that they can have a grant that given to them and they can start their idea. Um, we have kindness boxes around the school where students can put a nice word in about a staff member or a friend or another student that they've seen. And we had a staff member reach out to Leon Theolitas, who is part of the Kindness Diaries, a Netflix series. And he has um, been so nice because of how he heard about Morgan. He's coming to visit our school on September 27th um, to connect. And his whole message is about human connection, which I think given the state of things in our country right now is really needed. So I think the students are excited about the possibility of where this, um, this school-wide theme will take us and looking at um, how their gratitude for others and how thankful they are for things can offset sometimes that negativity that can counter in your brain for why things might not be working out for you. But if we try to focus on the positive and look at what we're thankful for and the people in our lives that matter, I think that will also help with students who might fall into that category of you know, not feeling good about themselves. Right. So. Um, in classes or programs, I know the PTA is having a suicide awareness um, event, do you address like teen suicide and risk factors and signs like explicitly? Because I know it seems like you have an overall mental wellness health approach. I think we approach it from wellness in general. Um, and in fact, this week we are going to have a student-led assembly where they're going to talk about Suicide Prevention Week. And they're going to present information to the students. So for me, what I found over the course of the years is that if students are involved in the decision-making process for what they'd like to share with their peers, then the message is that much stronger for how they can then communicate and open up. So a lot of the times I'll be behind the scenes and facilitate conversations 
I think the work with um, REACT in the Clinton Youth and Family Service, a lot of those students are very passionate about what they see and hear and feel that they have a voice and they want to share that voice. So to answer your question, yes, we do. And we allow the students to give us some direction as to how we want to work with students. And oftentimes, I think that's a better way to help students hear about things that are important. And we can also connect real life situations that they can connect to, as opposed to telling them the statistic that might not necessarily connect. But if there's a story that they can relate to, and I think that they recognize it's important to think about who I am or who my friends are and how am I going to help if I do have a situation in which I have someone I'm concerned about or if I myself am feeling this way, I'm not alone. Right. In your time as principal, have you had a situation where um, a kid took his or her life that you had to address at, to the school community? I have. I have. Sorry. Um, I don't think I can do that. Sorry. Um, I did have a, a student who, um, um, unfortunately, was a, it was an accident. Um, but because of um, what he did, he, um, he passed away. And um, yeah, that, that was hard. It was really hard. Please stop that. <laughs> <laughs>